what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about insidious 6 we will be talking about i know what you did last summer the upcoming reboot legacy sequel whatever it's going to end up being we're going to talk about some blumhouse horror release date changes and we'll be talking about the latest status on a friday the 13th movie from sean cunningham so just start off here Insidious 6 is reportedly coming next year, according to Variety. A new entry in the Insidious franchise has been set for the theaters. The next installment of the Blumhouse production horror property, co-produced by Screen Gems, has been added to Sony's theatrical slate, with the studio dating the film for August 29th, 2025. No further details on the project were disclosed, including whether series regulars such as Patrick Wilson and Lee Winnell would be involved. The newly announced feature is different from Threads and Insidious Tale, an in-universe series spinoff that was first reported on by Deadline in May 2023 and is set to star Mandy Moore and Kumail Nanjiani, with Jeremy Slater attached to write and direct. Now, didn't Jason Blum say that this franchise was going to be taking a break? I guess not, but I doubt that the Lamberts are going to be involved with this latest entry. I honestly doubt that. Maybe it's going to be another Elise spinoff of sorts. They could actually finally pick up from the ending of the second film where we have that little girl who was played by Jenna Ortega and then Elise goes into the house. Granted, Elise is dead by that time. And there's a girl in the wheelchair, I believe, and she hears like this crackling sound and we are led to believe that it's the lipstick face demon who inevitably did return in the third movie. It just had nothing to do with the ending setup in the second film. But those first two movies are like the only ones I'd actually go to bat for. Insidious 5, while it wasn't spectacular, I wouldn't argue that it was trash. I know some people think it was trash. I don't remember that movie being trash. I haven't revisited it since it dropped. I also don't recall saying it was trash at the time of watching it and giving my review. But are you guys looking forward to the future of Insidious? Let me know why or why not down in the comment section below. The next thing we're going to jump into here is I Know What You Did Last Summer. So Sony's I Know What You Did Last Summer will be arriving in theaters next summer, according to The Hollywood Reporter. July 18th, to be exact. We have no update on the cast or anything else with the story outside of it leaning into social media as it's been previously reported and julie james is allegedly crucial for it to work well i think that part out part actually got confirmed by Leigh mckendrick herself as well sinistelf was first to hype it up we don't even know if jennifer and freddie will if it will in fact commit to this project but jen seems like a shoo-in just going off of her last interview where she would neither confirm or deny involvement i cannot wait for the movie but after discovering the alleged ending for Mike Flanagan's iteration, I have no doubts that this will be inferior to whatever he was going to give us. That's just how good of a director and writer Mike Flanagan has been for the last decade, I could argue. And whatever we get, I'm sure it'll be competent, but it won't hold a candle to what Mike Flanagan was cooking up. I think this movie will just take a mature Pretty Little Liars approach with Ray and Julie being forced to deal with the lie they told all those years ago and having no clue why ben would want to kill them how they lied about that they knew exactly why and led with the lie to the authorities and who knows how long that lie has been existing in their lives i guess this latest film will address that no idea if carla is going to return but even if she doesn't i see no reason to ignore the second movie yes it's inferior but not jeepers creepers four levels of inferior so next thing i want to talk about here is these blumhouse horror release date changes so two other upcoming Blumhouse sequels, according to Bloody Disgusting, have also received new release dates. You have Megan 2.0, now coming to theaters on June 27, 2025, previously announced for May 16th, 2025. Before I go any further, Ivana, uh, or Ivana Sacno has joined the cast as well, and her role, while not disclosed, might be the rumored second evil doll who's named Amelia I talked about this year. Keep in mind, Megan might be turning babyface and protecting Gemma and or Gemma and Katie. Yeah, Gemma and Katie from this new evil doll. So that's not yet to be confirmed. The stuff that I was sent as evidence is very concrete. As far as I know, this does not mean it could not be subject to change. But from that rumor, it would appear that you can expect Megan to take a T2 type of approach in which the evil doll from the first movie is going to become the good doll. And we have a new evil doll that I wholeheartedly think is going to be played by Ivana. Time will tell. The Black Phone 2, which had been set for theatrical release on June 25th, has now gone or is now going to be released on October 17th, 2025. I cannot wait for the Black Phone. 
I am also one of those people who gets why some people don't want to see a sequel and think it's pointless to do a sequel to this. But again, money talks. This movie was very profitable, so they're going to crank out a sequel. I'm intrigued at the poss possibility of this movie exceeding what that first movie did, even though I know some people also think that, that first movie was bad. I am just intrigued to see where they take this because of how dead in the first movie seems to be. Like I said before, they could just be taking a supernatural approach and turning the grabber or not taking a supernatural approach, but enhancing the approach that was already in that first movie by making the grabber their own version of Freddy Krueger, if you will. I could see them doing that. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here is going to be Friday the 13th. This is coming to us from Creepy Catalog. Sean Cunningham at Texas Frightmare this past weekend, or at one of these Texas Frightmare events recently, had a panel with him and some other co-stars of his, uh, or people he's worked with a part of the Friday the 13th franchise was asked about a new Friday the 13th movie reportedly, according again, Creepy Catalog. Sean Cunningham surprisingly didn't talk about any of the rights issues that have plagued the franchise for years. What he did talk about is that the major obstacle holding back a new Friday the 13th film is the reluctance of a movie studio like New Line, who owns the rights, to risk putting money into a horror project that might not see a huge return on its investment. He then went on to explain that in the post-pandemic world where movie watching habits are changing, especially for movies released in theaters, studios like New Line aren't necessarily willing to provide a substantial budget for a horror movie. In this case, he's got to be talking about a slasher film, and I'll get to why I say that. At least not for the one, at least not for one they're not really or reasonably certain will do well in theaters. So if they have doubts that Friday the 13th won't do well in theaters, there's a few reasons for that. Yes, obviously on the outside looking in, us as consumers of horror we can say that there is no doubt that it would be profitable however from new line's perspective this is what new line has been doing recently they've been relying on that conjuring franchise and just all things related to expanding that universe and so far that has been what has been successful for them when it comes to the horror genre the last thing that came out that was you could argue was in the slasher genre to a degree was malignant from new line that flopped that's not to say that that same thing will happen to Friday the 13th, but that could also be playing a factor as to why they think a movie like Friday the 13th right now probably won't return a profit. That's probably not true, but that's what they're thinking. And when looking at what they've been doing in the horror genre, it's easy to understand where they're coming from. It's unfortunate that they think this about Jason Voorhees. Hopefully they will come to love Jason Voorhees and appreciate him a bit more and put out a new movie. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.